In a previous video, I showed you how I printed a four-color chap cube on a low-cost A1 Mini 3D printer with the AMS light system. It's about a $330 setup. And it took over four hours to print the cube, and there was a lot of extra wasted plastic. Well, now I'm going to go the other direction and show you the Prusa XL with a multi-head tool system. This is about a $4,000 machine, but it prints really fast, and it can do a four-color chap cube in a lot less time with absolutely no waste. I'll explain it all on today's Filament Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Now I'm very fortunate to get to play with printers like this. In fact, this one was donated to the channel by Prusa. And a long time ago, I talked to Joseph Prusa himself when I was just getting started. And I said, I'd like to get a Prusa printer on my channel and I'll give it a good review. And he said, no. He said, I want an honest review. Tell me what's good, what's bad. Otherwise, I'm not giving you a printer. And that taught me a lot and I stuck to that. Every video I've done, I've tried to be completely honest. Missed some things, but I try to be completely honest. And I'm going to do that here. Now, even though this is a five tool head, fully assembled unit, I still had to assemble a few things because they can't be shipped like this. The tool heads all had to be installed and also the LCD had to be installed and both of them had some issues which Prusa support fixed really quickly for me but as you can see I'm missing one tool head because I had to wait for the parts. The first thing I ran into was the LCD connector. Their instructions show it has to go in this way but when I lined mine up the ribbon cable was on the wrong side. So they had built this with the ribbon cable backwards and it interfered with this wall that was on the LCD. Now I tried rewiring the ribbon cable and flipping it, but it was too difficult so I just broke the wall off and then I was able to put the connector in, no issues. That wall didn't really do anything and from there I could install the LCD. I did let Prusa know about it and they're going to try to figure out what went wrong. The next issue I had was trying to install one of the tool heads. You have to install this unit and then with an Allen wrench get in there and tighten some screws to hold it in place. But on one of my units, I couldn't turn the screw. I'd stick in my Allen wrench and it would just spin. It wouldn't turn the screw. I ended up breaking the thing apart and found out the screws had plastic in their head, not allowing the Allen wrench to get in and turn the screw. I let them know about it. They're going to send me a new unit. So for right now, I'm just going to run with four tool heads. Now I should point out that this thing is heavy. It's actually a beast. And I had this heavy duty table in my tool room. So I ended up putting it together on this table and it works out great. But that's why I'm filming from within my tool room rather than my studio. And I sound a little bit more echoey. I installed some red PLA in tool one and galaxy black in tool two. And then I printed their sample keychain. But if you notice the colors are different, it's not matching what I installed. But when I printed it, of course, it came out with the red and black. I also printed their sample benchy, the two color benchy, and it came out pretty nice. But I wanted to figure out why it wasn't showing the proper colors and if I could change the colors in the machine. Now if I go to the main menu and I click on filament, nowhere in here does it give me the information. Like it says change filament in all tools. And this just says change or don't change. But it really doesn't allow me to change the color. And there's a reason for that. It's because the colors are selected in the slicer and therefore in the G-code rather than in the machine. And so when I sliced a multicolored chap cube, it matched the spools that were on my printer because I set it that way in the slicer. This is actually a feature I liked in the A1 Mini is I could click on the filament menu, click on the spool, click on edit, and then I could choose the color from the menu and I could set the color right in the machine and then coordinate it with the slicer. So this is something I wish the Prusa XL would adopt. Let me change it and store it in the machine. Now one of the disadvantages to the A1 Mini multicolor is it wastes a lot of plastic just to print a simple chep cube. And that's because of the way it changes filament. What it does is it prints in one color, then it slides to the right, cuts the filament, slides to the left, squeezes out the old color, brings in the new color, shoots that aside, and then prints on the repriming of the nozzle, and then starts printing again. That takes time and wastes plastic. The advantage to the Prusa XL is the multiple tool heads. 
Each tool head can have a different color filament or even a different type of filament. PLA in one, PTG in another, TPU in a third, and it just changes and prints accordingly. Now I turned off the prime tower, so I'm actually using less plastic here as well. It's just printing the multicolor chep cube, which is significantly faster and no waste. In fact, this is only taking about 40 minutes where the A1 Mini took four hours to print the same print. I did print a chep cube with the wipe tower enabled. It took a little longer, but it came out cleaner. Then I printed without the wipe tower and it's definitely not as good. There's little fragments of filament sticking out. Here they are side by side. You can see the no wipe tower is definitely not as clean as the wipe tower version. As you can see, I'm just getting started here and I got to get that fifth tool installed, but I'm looking forward to where I could put ABS on one tool, TPU flexible on another tool, maybe even conductive filament on a third tool and make some nice electronics enclosures because electronics is really my hobby. And if you're into electronics, I highly recommend you check out PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com is a great place to get low cost circuit boards, but you can also get assembly services. You can supply them the parts or give them a bill of material with the parts list. They will track down the parts, solder things together, review it with you during the process, and at the end ship you completely assembled boards. So if you're looking for a manufacturing partner for your electronics designs, check out PCBWay.com. So how fast is the XL? A single color CHEP cube at a 0.2 layer height, 15% infill, took 20 minutes to print. A four color CHEP cube at a 0.2 layer height, 15% infill, took 40 minutes, so twice the amount of time. So this thing is expensive, but basically what you're paying for is high speed, plus the ability to do multiple different materials. That's what I'm really looking forward to playing with for a future video. Multicolor printing and multi-material clearly is where 3D printing is going. Even the models you see on Thangs.com and such, they're all designed for multiple colors. So this is the future, and I'm glad I was able to play with this nice machine. Thank you, Prusa, for donating it to the channel. I'll be doing more on this in the future, but I hope somehow we can get the price down. I mean, $4,000 for a machine is pretty serious spending money. And if we can get this down to maybe half the cost, that would be awesome. And I hope they take my suggestion seriously because this thing really should be able to control itself and set the colors. That's something that future firmware updates should definitely have. Now, this isn't the latest actual firmware. I'm going to try and update the firmware. I'm not that far behind, but maybe it's already there and I just haven't tested it. If you know, let me know in the comments below. I want to give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters. They are here for me every month. They make this channel possible. Thank you so much. I couldn't do it without you. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollowbuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.